Hey everyone. Today, I'm going to break down the process of consolidating financial statements for a parent company and its subsidiary. This can seem daunting, but stick with me and we'll simplify it step by step. First things first, let's define what we mean by consolidation. Simply put, consolidation is combining the financial statements of a parent company and its subsidiaries into one. This gives a clear picture of the overall financial position of the entire group. All right, so let's dive into the nitty gritty. Step one is to identify the parent and the subsidiary. The parent company is the one that holds a controlling interest in the subsidiary. This usually means owning more than 50% of its voting shares. Next, we need to align the accounting policies of both companies. This means if the parent company uses a certain depreciation method, the subsidiary should use the same method for consistency. Now, let's talk about intragroup transactions. These are transactions that occur between the parent and subsidiary. Common examples include sales of goods, loans, and dividends. For consolidation, we need to eliminate these transactions to avoid double counting. Let's take a practical example. Imagine the parent company sells inventory to the subsidiary. When consolidating, you have to remove the sale and purchase from both entities' records. This means adjusting the revenue and cost of goods sold accounts accordingly. Another big one is intercompany loans. If the parent company lends money to the subsidiary, this loan should not appear in the consolidated balance sheet. You'll need to eliminate both the loan receivable on the parent's books and the loan payable on the subsidiary's books. Dividends are another area to watch out for. If the subsidiary pays a dividend to the parent, this needs to be eliminated from the, the consolidated financial statements. This ensures that income isn't overstated. Now that we've covered intra-group transactions, let's move to non-controlling interests, or NCI. This represents the equity in a subsidiary that the parent company does not own. It's important to show NCI separately in the consolidated financial statements to give a clear picture of ownership. Lastly, we adjust for goodwill. Goodwill arises when the parent company acquires the subsidiary for more than the fair value of its net assets. It's an intangible asset that needs to be tested annually for impairment. And there you have it. To recap, consolidate by identifying parent and subsidiary, aligning accounting policies, eliminating intra-group transactions, accounting for non-controlling interests, and adjusting for goodwill. It may seem like a lot, but with practice, it becomes second nature. So, that's your crash course on consolidating financial statements. If you found this useful, hit the like button and subscribe for more accounting tips. Keep practicing and soon you'll be a pro at consolidations. Thanks for watching and see you next time.